Hello friends, this is Durga again from IT Varsity, a one-stop shop to learn all the technologies. So at this time we are talking about setting up uh, core components and so far we have set up uh, um, HDFS and now we will talk about setting up HDFS high availability. Before getting into HDFS high availability, let us recap uh, how the name node recovery and secondary name node works and what are the limitations, then we will go ahead and configure uh, 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 go ahead and see what are different uh, possibilities uh, while configuring high availability and we will configure using Cloudera Manager and we will review the parameters. It might take a couple of videos to cover all these things. So uh, first uh, let us uh, 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 go through the standard recovery and secondary uh, name node, uh, standard name node recovery and the role of secondary name node in it. So when uh, uh, there are any modifications to the metadata by adding files or by deleting files etc um, an entry will be made into a file structure called edit log unless the entry is uh, made successfully the write is not uh, considered as success so this edit logs is primarily used for recovery purpose but over time it, it can uh, grow abnormally and to, to restrict that um, periodically we will uh, use these edit logs and create a snapshot of our name node uh, at regular intervals and uh, the snapshot is called as fs image it contains files and blocks and edit logs are merged into this fs image at regular intervals and this process of merging the latest uh, edit log to the last fs image and creating the latest fs image is called as checkpointing and checkpointing is a um, resource intensive process. Uh, hence, uh, the responsibility of checkpointing is delegated to another uh, process called secondary name node which will be running on a different physical host than uh, where the name node is running. And then the recovery process uh, uh, name node starts in CF mode, first it will, the FS image will be restored and uh, whatever is missing in the FS image will be recovered using edit log. Um, and then name node will do a roll call to data nodes to determine the locations of the blocks. So this is the standard recovery process. Now let us talk about the limitations. <coughs> so checkpointing is resource intensive and uh, over time checkpointing might not happen and there is no way to keep track of uh, whether the checkpointing happening uh, or not um, or it is little bit challenging to, uh, to keep track of the checkpointing process. And also as part of the recovery process, let's say a motherboard is failed uh, in, uh, in the name node, which means that we have to get a new physical server and we have to install name node on it and then we have to restore and recover. In some cases, the IP address of that new physical host have to, might have to be changed and in those cases, uh, the failover to the new name node is not transparent. You have to manually deploy the configuration files such as poset.xml file on all the nodes in the cluster. And also the recovery process is time consuming. First FS image has to be restored and the edit logs has to be applied uh, to complete the recovery process. And it is time consuming and more importantly above all these things, name node is a single point of failure and uh, if it fails everything uh, comes to a halt until it comes up uh, uh, and hence bringing up name node as quickly as possible is uh, significant. Okay. So we need to uh, mitigate these issues and uh, as part of Hadoop 2, they have introduced a concept called HDFS HA. Uh, instead of having a name node and secondary name node, as part of HA we will have active or standby name node. And then there, there will be something called journal nodes or shared edit log directories um, and uh, we need to have zookeeper uh, to to work on split brain scenario and uh, may, uh, make sure uh, the failover happens transparently. Uh, on top of these things, there, there will be a controller process, uh, ZKFC, uh, Zookeeper failover controller process, which will be running. So these are the components 
active and standby name nodes journal nodes and the zkfc controller okay and uh, uh, the hdfs ha provides uh, high availability and transparent failover uh, for your uh, uh, name node so yeah again um, uh, you will have active and standby name node uh, we we will not have secondary name node if we configure high availability the secondary name node will be dismantled but at any given point in time only one no node will be active the other one will be standby and uh, we can swap the roles uh, gracefully between the um, two nodes um, by making one active we can make the other standby standby node will get edit logs at regular intervals from journal nodes or uh, shared edits uh, so there are two ways to get these uh, edit logs at regular intervals uh, the first and simpler way of doing it is by providing shared storage it uses nfs to store edit logs in shared location by both name node active name node writes to shared edit logs and passive name node reads from shared edit logs and apply onto the second uh, standby or passive name node and the other way of uh, dealing with shared edits is by using journal edits typically we will have three of them so when an entry is made into name node uh, it will try to uh, write to majority of the journal nodes um, and that is taken care by active node uh, active name node will write edit logs to majority of the configured journal nodes and standby name node will read edit logs from any of the surviving journal node so the, these two are the ways which you can use to configure um, uh, the shared edits which is the crucial part of um, applying these edit logs at regular intervals and zookeeper is primarily uh, uh, will be running either on three or five nodes and the process will be running with uh, name proc underscore zkfc zkfc stands for zookeeper uh, uh, failover controller it's li lightweight and can be deployed on both name nodes and resource managers typically it will be deployed on three if you want to go with more than three you might go uh, up to five or any odd number so this is how uh, it will look like uh, and the name node will have the quorum journal manager if you go with the second option journal nodes which is more stable and more uh, uh, reliable than shared storage but a little bit complicated um, and this is how the architecture will look like you will have a active name node and a standby name node with uh, quorum journal manager and uh, the entries will be made um, onto majority of the journal nodes local disks so whenever an edit log is written the edit, uh, whenever an entry is made into edit logs those details will be written to uh, uh, journal nodes as well uh, it will try to write to majority of journal nodes so if there are three it will try to write to at least two and only if it writes to two then the write is successful otherwise it is not and then the standby name node will be reading uh, from one of these surviving journal nodes which got the data from the active name node and it will keep on applying on the standby node reducing the gap between active and standby uh, if something goes wrong only the final edit log has to be applied and it can be applied within the matter of seconds to couple of minutes now we will understand uh, how to set up hdfs high availability um, by using the cloudera manager so you can go to cloudera manager login and it's very straightforward um, high availability is related to name node so click on hdfs either you can uh, go to actions in hdfs and enable high availability or you can also click on name node and click on actions and uh, click on enable high availability so when it comes to high availability instead of uh, because we will have multiple uh, uh, ip addresses one for name node active and one for standby name node hence uh, we 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 will create something called name service and uh, let us name it as cdh5 name service or cdh name service cdhns 
and click on continue you can give any name you want so here it has picked up the current uh, name node um, uh, as one of uh, the name nodes and for the active passive configuration you need to have two of them so i will use node 02 on which secondary name node is running click on ok so we have two nodes for uh, high availability and then we have to choose the journal nodes typically journal nodes are very lightweight process so you can choose the nodes on which uh, the name node uh, active name node and passive name node are uh, running and the third one you can choose wherever resource manager is deployed so resource manager is master for processing which we have not configured yet um, but you can share the same set of masters for the journal nodes uh, typically it should be on the name node uh, active name node passive and the resource manager on a uh, production uh, ready cluster but in, in our case we have only four nodes i'm just choosing three of these things uh, resource manager will be running on node 01 only when we actually deploy it later okay click on ok and click on continue and uh, uh, if you want you can change the name node uh, data directories uh, name node directories uh, in this case i don't want to change uh, if you want to uh, so let's leave it as default and we will see what will happen i think it will uh, choose some default uh, uh, of uh, directory convention we will see that and then we have to force initialize the zookeeper zeno for auto failover any previous zeno used for this name, name, name service will be overwritten so it is com, uh, coming to zookeeper we have to um, choose these things clear any existing data present in name directory of standby name node because we don't need the standby name node anymore and also if you are actually upgrading you can clear any existing data present in the journal node in directory for this name service choose all these three and click on uh, continue so the edit directory cannot be empty so we have to provide the location so i will say dfs edits on all the three nodes and hit continue So now first it, will, it is uh, uh, cleaning up uh, the standby name node and then it is actually trying to see if the directories are already there which, which are slash dfs slash edits which we have given. Make sure you have a different mount point for this uh, uh, in the production cluster. In development you can use the same mount point. Uh, anyway we will talk about mount points and all those things in detail when we actually uh, come, uh, go to the capacity planning so now it is stopping the cluster and then it, it will create the roles, of, uh, roles to enable high, high availability you can see that you will have a na new name node new failover controller on node 01 and node 02 on which we have configured active and passive uh, name node so failover controllers will be running only on the active name node and passive name node and then new journal nodes are created on the nodes which we have selected and uh, it has deleted the secondary name node and it has configured the name node and HDFS service to enable high availability and uh, also it has uh, initialized high availability state in zookeeper so zookeeper will take care of the failover uh, controller um, whenever the failover needs to be done and now the journal nodes are being started once the journal nodes are started it, it, ha, it is formatting the name directories of the current name node uh, if, if the name directories are not empty this is expected to fail so most likely this might fail let's see because we already have the data in our cluster uh, the formatting is not valid on the current name node hence it, it has failed which is expected now it is initializing the shared edits directory of name nodes which is slash dfs slash edits 
So shared edit that is also initialized. If you want to look into the logs of each of the component, you can expand these things and go to full log file and uh, you can click on that and it will show what is happening in there. So still long way to go, it will take a while to start all these things and once it is done, uh, our uh, name nodes will be started with high availability configured. So now the standby name node is also started, you can see it here and now the failover controllers are started on uh, variable active and passive are running node 01 and node 02. So everything is started fine, click on continue, click on finish. Let us see what is this issue. Yeah, so there are some warnings related to the free spaces which we can suppress. Let me do that. Because we have limited capacity on our uh, cluster and this one, I am not sure what this issue is, probably once we fix the free log space, the issue might go away automatically. Yeah, log directory free space, we can suppress this one. General directory free space, we can suppress this one. Log directory free space, we can suppress this one too. Okay, all the issues are related to free space only, we can ignore those things, that's why I am suppressing those errors. And now it is in warning state, all the warnings are also related to free space. You can click on this and see the details. Okay. Anyway, so now we have successfully set up active name node and uh, standby name node uh, uh, as part of uh, HA configuration. You can click on this and you can... Uh, You can see it here. You can say name node. You can click on this one. And you can see that there are two name nodes now active and standby, the name node and secondary name node as part of the typical configuration. And uh, uh, as we have successfully configured, as part of the next video, we will see uh, or we will review the overall uh, uh, setup. We will go through the parameter files, we, we will go through the important parameters and also we will recap all the uh, HA components such as uh, active name nodes, standby name nodes, journal nodes, uh, zookeeper, uh, uh, failover controller, all those things. Uh, okay. That being said, I hope you are enjoying the content on the channel. If you like this video, please click on the like button. If you want to provide the feedback, please use the comment section of the video. If you want to discuss further about uh, big data or certifications, please join my LinkedIn group called ITVST-Big Data or ITVST-Certifications. And finally, if you are not subscribed to my channel yet, please do so. You will get to see a lot more content like this over time. Thank you. Bye.